coming today to visit my ancestor, great-great-grandfather John M. Ward, a farmer from a long line of farmers who saw a need to help grow this town by serving locally and also taking an interest in developing the state in Nebraska. This is his Ward family lot along with his wife, my great-great-grandmother, Arilla Ward. Her maiden name was Matheson. But back to my great-great-grandfather. On November 3, 1914, John M. Ward was elected to the Nebraska State Legislature in the House of Representatives a Republican serving two terms in 1915 and 1917. He represented the 43rd District, which included Clay County, Fillmore County, and York County. That was when Nebraska was a bicameral be house before going to a unicameral. His two terms in the state legislature consisted the same years as World War I, with the United States entering during his second term on April 6, 1917. A year earlier, though, was the crisis at the border with Pancho Villa in Mexico. Researching about the history of the Nebraska State Legislature and the National Guard at the border brought me to what my great-great-grandfather was a part of. The National Guard, being activated the year before, gave the United States a better prepared military when eventually entering World War I. The next section is from the Nebraska Blue Book, 1918 military section. The legislature of 1917 passed an act for the organization of the Nebraska National Guard in conformity with the National Defense Act of June 3, 1916. An administrative staff, engineer signal corps, not less than one or more than five regiments of infantry, not more than a regiment of cavalry, not more than a regiment of artillery, a medical corps, not more than one field hospital and one ambulance company and one aero company are provided for. While also serving his two terms in the state legislature, a concern the country was needing improved roads for the growing use of automobiles and to accommodate them. On July 11, 1916, the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, signed into law the bill for the Federal Aid Road Act of 1916 to provide federal funding to improve the nation's roads. The Nebraska legislature, when it met again in January 1917, with my great-great-grandfather being president, uh, complied with the terms of the act and pledged to provide the necessary funds and appropriated for the biennial period the amount of $640,000. One other issue that was of interest for the state legislature and also Fillmore County was prohibition of liquor. Deciding how Nebraska would go caused the legislative session to be the second longest in the history at that time at the Nebraska State Legislature. An article found in the Nebraska Signal shows this point of interest for the time period. And this is from the Nebraska Signal, January 11, 1917, page 1. The Legislature. The Legislature organized on Tuesday of last week as required by law. George Jackson of Knuckles was re-elected Speaker without much opposition, although there were other several candidates. The Democrats have a large majority and all of their caucus nominees were elected. Only prelim preliminary matters were disposed of last week. All proceedings moved quietly. In the Senate, there was a lively scrap over the honorary position of President Pro Tem. Senator John Mattis of Oto, very wet and very anti-Brian, was elected over the protests of the Ford Bryan Democrats. Mattis was charged with being hand in glove with the big corporate interests of Omaha. The Democrats have a large majority in the Senate, as well as in the House. It seems probable that the only big fight of this session will be over the form of the legislation to be enacted for the enforcement of the by prohibitory amendment. The ultra dries and possibly the ultra wets with a bone dry law. But conservatives want a law that will provide for what they term a reasonable enforcement of the prohibitory amendment without an undue invasion of the personal rights of individuals in the matter of receiving, keeping, and drinking liquor as they choose at their own homes. The next most important legislation will be in regard to proposed changes in the road laws of the state which are considered rather antiquated. The results for prohibition of liquor in Nebraska was decided 
and you can read what happened in the Nebraska Signal newspaper of April 26, 1917, that was displayed. That's this one right here. At the end of John M. Ward's two terms as a Nebraska State Representative, he would have been 64 years of age, and John and Arilla would be retired from farming for a few years now, living in Geneva at the corner of North 12th and 8th Street. Even though it was the beginning of the age of the automobile, his transportation for getting to Lincoln and back was still by the way of the train. John and Arilla farmed all their lives, starting in Fond du Lac County, Wisconsin, where both were born a few miles from each other. They came to Fillmore County two years after getting married, hearing the call to go west with the idea to own their own land. Most of the farmland in Wisconsin was already settled on many years before, Arilla's parents being one of the early settlers in Wisconsin, just after they were married and moving to that state in 1850. John and Arilla were residents of Fillmore County since when they brought their oldest son here in early 1879, originally buying what was called railroad land a few months before in October 1878. 160 acres between Fairmont and Exeter, building a sod house, farming the quarter section of land for six years, then selling it, and buying the home place four miles north of Geneva on Road 12, which is just right over here if you go north. Arilla's brother, a couple years later, bought the quarter section across the road from where John and Arilla lived on Gene in Geneva Township. You may know her brother from his portrait. He was the county clerk for Fillmore County from 1892 to 1896. Richard Matheson. His picture is on the wall in the Fillmore County Courthouse to this day. Arilla's parents and another brother also came from Wisconsin to Fillmore County. They all farmed together within a mile of each other. Her parents and the other brother owned a quarter north of John and Arilla's farm. The early days of farming when Fillmore County was just being established, you especially needed family around working the farms together. The wards would eventually own three quarter sections of farmland north of here with it being passed down to their three children, George Ward, Ella Ward Brooke, and Harry Ward. Percy, their youngest son, didn't live past his school age years when he got sick and developed a heart condition, never recovering from it. That's his right over here. He is buried here in the Ward family lot not long after his 22nd birthday. The red granite headstones, a monument you see, would have been quarried not far from where John and Rilla grew up and got married back in the state of Wisconsin. Take a drive up north on Road 12. Much of the land is still owned and farmed by the descendants of John and Arilla Ward. We are the Ward family, Engel family, Seaver family, and the Aspergan family, which is me, part of the Ward Aspergan descendants. <laughs> the farmhouse was built up north, you can still see. It's a two story farmhouse where many of their descendants have lived, up to them moving into Geneva. Besides farming, my great great grandfather realized early on the new idea of offering farm insurance for unforeseen circumstances. He established the Fillmore County Farmers Mutual, Mutual Insurance Company of 1891, where he was president. Maybe it was the severe hail and windstorms that hit their farm, as what happened in 1898, later confirming the need for having insurance. They lost much of their wheat crop in that June storm, according to the newspaper, as did many of their neighbors. Great-great-grandfather Ward also saw the need for having a bank in this growing town and was part of the founding of the Geneva State Bank located on Main Street across from the Filmer County Courthouse. These are the stories I have learned about my great-great-grandfather and his wife, my great-great-grandmother, from researching over the years. I think he took an interest in how the town of Geneva would grow and also the state of Nebraska, serving locally on the Fillmore County Board of Supervisors, then later as a member of the Nebraska State Legislature. His decision to move his family from all that he knew in Wisconsin to a place where farms were just being homesteaded a few years earlier definitely would have been a big undertaking. He and his wife made it work, though, farming the three-quarter sections of farmland in a time when it would have been by horses and mules instead of the tractors and farm equipment of today. And if you want to come up, you can look at all the things I've accumulated over the years. This is from the Nebraska Blue Book. It shows a picture of him when he was in the state legislature. This is their 50th wedding anniversary picture with the family. This one I just found the other, about a week ago. It shows where their plaques, this is in front of the courthouse. You can see the little plaques all that go all the way around. And this is the beginning, the railroad land. Uh, purchase and it goes all the way up to when he was in the state legislature. 
You're welcome to come look at them. Chris, you said that they lived in, when they moved to Geneva, they lived in, what did you say, 11th or 12th and no, 8th? Railroad land, when they first came to Fillmore County. 